For part three of how to buy a house, we are discussing if we need a real estate agent, what they do, why we would need one, and times maybe we might not need an agent. So if you watch part one and two, we've already established where we wanna move, the type of house that we wanna buy, and also we've gotten our finances together and we've gotten pre-qualified. So the next step is discussing real estate agents and how they can help you purchase a home. Why would I need an agent? <laughs> so that is a good question. The role of real estate agents is really changing, especially because of technology. So let's get into that. So let's discuss the different terms first. Um, we hear real estate agent, we hear real estate broker, we hear realtor. Those are all different terms that kind of relate to the same thing. So a real estate agent is a licensed real estate salesperson who works under a real estate brokerage. So a real estate brokerage is a person or a company that the salesperson has to report to and works under, and their license is held by the broker. So examples of brokerages are Remax, Reichert, Berkshire Hathaway, Fox and & Roach, and a bunch of other companies. So at these brokerages, there is a person who is licensed as a broker, which means that they can carry licenses underneath them. And so real estate salespeople work as independent contractors under those brokerages. So anytime you're signing documents with an agent, you're actually signing with the brokerage. And now you hear the term realtor, and that's referring to someone who's part of the National Association of Realtors. Realtors, most agents pretty much are forced to be in that group. So real estate agent and realtor are pretty interchangeable. And then when you're talking about a broker, that's basically a higher level, um, but they could still act as a real estate agent in a transaction. And honestly, these terms and titles are just there to impress people. It's really about your work ethic, your trustworthiness, and your experience and, and what you know as an agent that really matters for clients. So don't get caught up in all these terms or certifications and things like that. When you're looking to buy a home for the first time especially, having an agent definitely helps and can guide you through the process and make sure you avoid a lot of pitfalls. Watch out! And when I talk about finding a real estate agent, I mean finding an agent who's going to represent you in a transaction as a buyer. So they would be called a buyer's agent once you establish that relationship with them. One of the biggest pitfalls for people buying homes is understanding who represents who in a transaction. So if you see a for sale sign outside of someone's house and you call the agent on that sign, that agent is the agent for the seller. And their responsibility is to negotiate on behalf of that seller and get them the most money possible. So check out this scenario. Hello, Mr. Agent. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? I'd like to see 123 Main Street. Yeah, I love the house. It's actually down the street from my cousin. Okay. You know, I really love this house. I'm actually pre-qualified for $250,000, and I'd like to see it. Oh, and you're pre-qualified. That's great. Yeah, you know, I see it's listed at $230,000, and honestly, I'm willing, I, I would pay $250,000 for it. <laughs> yeah, let's go see it at 5 o'clock. Jim, so you like the house? Yeah, so I love the house. I'd like to put an offer in. So the house is listed at 230 and it's a competitive market right now. Well, I'm, I would like to pay less than 230 Let's try 220 since that's the list price at 230 And, you know, if they counter, uh, I'll, I'm willing to go up quite a bit. So I just showed your house, and the buyer was very, very interested. His family actually lives nearby, and he's definitely putting in an offer at 220000 but he did tell me he's qualified up to $250,000. So I think we should counter at $250,000. Hey, Jim, how are you? Good, good, good. Yeah, so I do have an answer for the seller. Um, the, they want to counter at $250,000. They countered at two hundred fifty. dollars Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know it's more than what you really wanted to pay, but I, you know, you have family that lives nearby and you know, it's the perfect house for you. Well, I mean, I still want the house. It's down the street from my cousin. So, all right, we'll do $250,000 right up the contract. Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'll write it up and we're in verbal agreement. I will write up the contract. Babe, babe, we got the house. We got the house. And without knowing it, that's how you can lose money by not knowing who's representing you and if you don't have a buyer's agent. It's extremely important to know who is working for who in a real estate transaction.
In most states, real estate agents do need to give you a document that explains this dynamic, but if you're just signing stuff, you might not catch that. So don't let that situation happen to you. And to avoid that, what you wanna do is seek out an agent that's gonna represent you before you start looking at homes. This way they could set up alerts for you and tell you about different neighborhoods and really direct you to what you're looking for. And the biggest part is they're gonna negotiate on your behalf and only your behalf. Another important reason to have a real estate agent is that they smooth out the paperwork process, they have all the documents, they make sure everything is right, and you can still have an attorney, but a real estate agent is going to do a pretty good job of making sure that your sales contract is correct and everything that you meant to happen actually happens. The most important reason to have a buyer's agent is their negotiation skills and their understanding of the market. And I'm going to get heavy into negotiations in part five. Another reason to have a buyer's agent is that they should point out things that you wouldn't necessarily notice when you're first looking at homes. What I like to do is open kitchen cabinets and check out the heating system, see how old the water heater is, the furnace, things like that, that people don't really think about when they're first looking at the house. A lot of times people just care about how the house looks, but you have to pay attention to the roof, the foundations, the sidewalks, if it's cracked, and a whole bunch of other things that home buyers might not think of, but is really, really important. So if you notice, we haven't talked anything about it, agents sending you listings or helping you actually find the house. And that's because technology has really changed with that. So you have Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia, where you can look up homes yourself. And so the real value for agents now is setting up alerts and showing you homes when they come onto the market. That is very important, especially right now, which is a very hot seller's market where buyers need to jump on houses right away. And that is a value that agents can provide because we can get alerts on when those homes come available. But for finding houses, Zillow, Truly, and Realtor.com, you can definitely find that information. It might be a little outdated, so you want to send that information to your realtor if you do see a listing you like. And so it might already be under contract, but a lot of times they're pretty sufficient. Now, where having an agent helps you in this category is for bank-owned properties because the way that listings are online, it'll say foreclosure or pre-foreclosure, and these terms can be confusing. And so it helps to have a buyer's agent who can walk you through that, especially if you're looking for bank-owned properties. Now that we see the importance of having a buyer's agent in most situations, let's talk about how to find the actual agent. Honestly, the best way is recommendations. I would ask people that I know and trust and see what agent they used and how they felt about that agent if they did a good job. I wouldn't necessarily say an agent who has a lot of transactions in an area is the best because a lot of being an agent honestly is marketing. And so you want to really work with someone that you click with and does have the experience set that is going to be able to help you, but you want to make sure that they have integrity and are actually working on your behalf. That is the most important thing. If they are working with their experience to help you buy a home, you're in good hands. And the best way to figure that out is to get recommendations from people you know and trust. If you're new to an area or you don't have recommendations, another way you're going to have to go online and do some research and maybe interview a couple agents to be your buyer's agent. So when you're interviewing buyer's agents, definitely ask them about how they're getting paid. Most of the time that agent is getting a commission from the seller and so you don't have to pay them anything. All right, so we covered why you should have an agent and how to find one. And now the last thing is what do they do? A real estate agent is going to negotiate your deals. They're going to help you find homes. They're going to help you avoid pitfalls through home inspection and help you renegotiate those situations. They can help give you guidance on your financing. They're generally gonna help you avoid pitfalls and they're gonna represent you and make sure you get the best deal possible. Another quick thing to point out is that agents are not exclusively buyers or listing agents. It's just depending on who they're working with at the time. So if I'm representing a buyer in one transaction, I'm a buyer's agent. And if I'm representing a seller in a different transaction, then I'm the listing or seller's agent. So now let's go over some scenarios where you might not need a real estate agent. Now you have to be careful here because doing a real estate transaction is a really big deal. And 99% of the time, it's important to have someone who has experience with these transactions, but there are ways to save money sometimes. And I will get into that. Ooh, some agents might get mad at me for talking about this. All right, so I would say if you're doing a private transaction with someone that you know and you're able to get a contract, then I would say you probably could do the transaction without paying a commission and just doing it between two parties that know each other. 
you probably will need some guidance, but really a title company, if you pay for their settlement services, can help you stumble through. And if you wanna take the risk and you think it's worth it, you might be able to get by. But again, you don't wanna mess up your transaction because of this. If you've bought a home before and you're experienced with contracts and you're pretty confident and you wanna take the risk, Something you can do if a home is listed by another agent is ask them to knock off 3% because that's normally what they're paying another agent and you might be able to get a deal that way. A real estate transaction for most people is one of the biggest transactions they've ever done in their life and so I wanna play around with it and it's important to have an expert but again, that's my disclaimer. And so that's pretty much it for part three of how to buy a house. If you like this video, if you're interested in real estate, definitely subscribe on YouTube and like our Facebook page at Fagan Carnation Realtors. I pride myself in being accessible, so my contact information is in the description box, or you can leave a comment or Facebook message me, however you would prefer. I can answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.